All right, here we go. I'm very excited. It's still series two and it's episode 30. And really, does this man need any introduction? Well, maybe he does. Mr. Doug Goldstein, uh, one of the, probably the best known managers in America today. Uh, he had his illustrious career, what, 17, 18 years with Guns N' Roses in the height of their success and various other bands. Doug, welcome to my humble little podcast, Seven Minutes Max. Thank you, Mr. Mark. Yes, sir. Yeah, you're, yeah, yeah. you're a good man. You're a good man. I've been trying to get you on for a while, but, you know, down in Florida there and the sun's so nice and, That's you right. know, between drinking pina coladas and going to barber shops, you've got no time for me. <laughs> Exactly, buddy. That's right, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. So, buddy, you know the way this works. Um, we put you on for seven minutes. <clears throat> if it takes longer, it takes longer. That's fine. But um, I don't think it'd be possible to ask you seven questions in seven minutes, is it? I don't think so, bud. <laughs> it's a bit like my sex life. It could end. It could either end really quick or not. <laughs> or not happen at all. That's right. Yeah. Too funny. All right, buddy. Here we go. So your time starts now. All right. Question one. What's the most rebellious stage act you've ever seen? And where? That has, that has to be Axel Rose diving into the crowd to beat up the, the punter on his own instead of letting security handle it in St. Louis. Yeah. Easily. Yeah, that's a no-brainer. The St. Louis incident. That's right. Yeah, it was the second show they've ever held in the building, and it was literally torn down. The building was torn down, and they walked away with all of our gear. <laughs> Unbelievable. What year was that? It would have been 91. Yeah. 1991. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. All right. Yeah. Perfect. 91. Perfect. All right. If you could go back, so that's question one. Thank you. So, question two. If you could go back in time and see a band that you've never seen before, who would that have been and when? Uh, the Fab Four. I would love to see the Beatles, and I would like to see them during the early days when it was uh, chaotic, um, like their uh, the first uh, arrival into New York. Yes. Uh, yeah, I think that would have been amazing. Would you like big, to? Big fan, big, 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 big fan of the Beatles. Simplicity, <laughs> but to watch. Um, but to watch what happened, what transpired in the involvement of the music in a seven year period. Yeah. Um, shit me, from Meet the Beatles to, you know, the White Album and Sgt. Peppers, forget about it. It's, inter about it's interesting, you look at that. Remember they came out with that red and that blue best of? Like yeah, sure. the red was 60s and the blue was 70s. It's like a different band, how they just moved. That's right. It's and unbelievable. I mean, look, I hate to always refer back to GNR, but it's what I know. I have 17 years. And, and that's what I always say about, you know, people ask me all the time, why do they break up? And, and my, my response is normally the same. Um, if it was up to Axel, it would have been the involvement of the Beatles. And if it was up to Slash, it would have been more along the lines of either ACDC or the Rolling Stones. Yeah. Where pretty much you knew what to expect per album. Um, yeah. There wasn't a whole lot of involvement in the music. Yeah, interesting. Interesting. It'd be interesting to see if and when new music sees a light of day. Yeah. What it sounds like. Yeah. yeah. I do hear interesting uh, scuttlebutt about um, that there there may be some differences of opinion. Totally. <laughs> 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 think Nice that it's on somebody else's fucking plate now instead of mine. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. Question. I'm tired of wearing that, uh, that black and white striped shirt, Mark. What's that? I got tired oh, the, of wearing that black and white yeah, yeah. shirt. The referee, the umpire. That's right, yeah. Totally. All right, question three. Which one of your idols, it doesn't have to be music, it could be anything. Which one of your idols have you met that was awesome? And which one of your idols have you met that was a nightmare, that was not who you thought of? You, he wasn't as good or she wasn't as good as you thought he might be. Or she might be. Well, oddly enough, because um, I'd have to I'd have to paraphrase it by saying there was a time period. Uh, 1991, our former president Donald Trump came to the show, 
um, Madison Square Garden um, on the premise that he wanted to meet the quote unquote Donald Trump of rock and roll. And when I looked at him like a like if you showed a dog a card trick and said pick one anyone because I had no clue what he was talking about. He said, Doug, look, he said, when you're the underdog, the press builds you to the top and they want you at the top, they jerk your ass back down. And he said, that's what's happening to your senior now. And um, he was right. But um, you know, I take people on face value. You know that about me, Mark. It's, um, and he was as pleasant as could be. And the very next night, um, I literally uh, was out uh, having Thai food with uh, Peter Mench, who manages the Chili Peppers, Metallica, and Black Keys, and Muse. And there's very few bands that he doesn't manage. <laughs> and, um, and I hear this Doug Goldstein. I look up, and it's Donald Trump. And, he comes and sits down. He talks to me for about 45 minutes and gave me his business card. And I used to carry it around telling people I had the Trump card. But <laughs> uh, I mean, he was just as ple pleasant as could be. So again, I go on face value, how people treat me. Um, I'm not a real political guy, to be honest with you. So I don't really, I didn't get caught up into what he was um, or who he was as a president. But, uh, and I'd have to say least, and I, boy, I hate to say that, um, I'm not really into idol worship, but um, but as far as somebody that I thought would be nicer than they really were was Morgan Fairchild. Um, poof, what a serious <laughs> idiot she is. <laughs> wow. Get out of my way. I have a date with Roger Daltrey. I say, yeah, me too. Wow. Yeah, wow, was, that's, that's pretty full on. Yeah, yeah. Was that during yeah, the Gunners days? And you know what? And in all fairness, I have to say another person who's just incredibly nice is Priscilla Preston. Yeah. Well, I've been on since about 85, I guess. Just a just a tremendous person. And Priscilla's son is in a band now called Them Guns that you manage that's on Golden Robot. That's what I hear. Yeah. That's what I hear. Very yes, cool. Sir. Very cool. Very cool. All right. Brilliant. Question four. And you're on five minutes, 30 seconds. You're doing well. Right. Question four. Question four. Um, all right. You're in LA. You're walking down the street. <laughs> it's two in the morning. You're on your own. No yeah. one's around. Yeah. You look down an alley. You see a bag. You go down because you're curious. There's a one. There's one million dollars in that bag. One million US. No one's around. No one's claiming it. No one's interested. The money's sitting there. What do you do? Feed the homeless. Okay. The whole lot. Because I had, because I had that money before, and I didn't, so I don't anymore. <laughs> so, so you take, so you're not handing it in. You're keeping the million. How much you spending on the homeless out of that million? How much? You, how much probably, you can? Probably nine hundred thousand. And then you, what would you buy? A Cadillac or something? Nah, um, yeah, I'd probably leave the other hundred. I'd split it in, in half and give it to the sons. That's yeah. the boys. Nice. Okay. Okay, nine hundred to the homeless, hundred grand to family. Yeah. Right. I like that. At least you said you do. At least you were not going to hand it back. I'm not handing it back. To who? <laughs> There's nobody there. <laughs> I'm not going on an Easter egg hunt to find out who the hell left it. <laughs> totally, totally. All right, question. I see mine at that point. <laughs> oh, it's yours, you. baby. It's yours. Don't worry about that. All right. All right. Question six. Where and what was it? Your best far fast food experience your best fast food experience that's easy that's a, that's a no-brainer it's, it's the best job of my life i worked at burger king when i was 16 um yeah cleaning out the grills i was closing and at 16 um doing the closing shift i'd go to the beach during the day in san diego and then i'd go to work and i'd say the youngest gal uh, closing was about 22 mm -hmm. and they would take turns taking me out to the parking lot parking lot and having their way with me yeah well of course i mean <laughs> tough to tough to force the willing into situations like that but it was the best job i ever had including guns i love it i love it love it love it As... on, on the burger king tour than on any gnr tour <laughs> <laughs> and you just used to eat the food the whopper all the... do you have a whopper on burger king is that the whopper i, I didn't have a whopper but they didn't care mine was small <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. We're talking about the burger. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Uh, I love it. And could you, would you still eat Burger King today? Oh, no doubt. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I love the BK fish. BK fish? 
throw a little lettuce and tomato and onion on that one. Oh, yeah. Too funny. Too funny. All right. Get the fries, Mark. Too funny. All right. What's the best advice you've ever been given? And what's the worst advice you've ever been given? Uh, best advice is probably uh, SWSWSW, and that's from my father, uh, and it's applicable in pretty much every situation of business. Some will, some won't, so what? And how did you take that? Like, how do you take that? I think we've got a frozen Doug. <laughs> you still there, buddy? So what was the, we just, we dropped out there for two seconds. So what was, what, let's re go over the question, question seven. What's the best advice you've been given and what's the worst advice you've been given? Well, my father's always been my advisor and he gives me incredible. So, that, I mean, there's so many to choose from, but the one that I always kind of uh, latch on to is some will, some won't. So what? S-W-S-W-S-W. Um, Basically, it's, it just reminds me not to take life too serious, that not everybody that you pitch is going to accept whatever your proposal is, and that's okay, move on, because somebody will. Um, the worst advice is probably get out of the music business, um, because there's no money in it. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah. And, and how much, how different do you think the music business is today, 2021, compared to, say, 1991? Incredibly different. Yeah, I mean, you, you know, it's, I was really proud of the fact that I had negotiated the biggest uh, recording deal in the history of music, and now it's completely irrelevant, because as we all know, music's free. So, um, you know, it used to be that you would tour to support your album, and now it's just the opposite, of yeah. course. Yeah. Um, you know, so you give away your music to uh, hopefully build a, a fan base that will attend your shows. And you, and obviously, I know the answer to this. So I have my own opinion on this. But do you think there'll ever be uh, a band that can achieve the hype like Guns N' Roses did from, say, 89 to 93 ever again? Can you see those times coming back when we have a band that's the biggest band in the world doing what, what they did? I think so. Yeah, I really do. Yeah. yeah. It's um, the, the interesting thing that always occurs to me is Kids still listen to ACDC, Aerosmith, Guns N' Roses, Metallica, and I believe it's because uh, primarily the music, lead guitar. There's no lead guitar today, and so um, people miss that. You know, there's yeah. no guitar heroes. Um, yeah. My son, I love my son to death, but he's uh, he plays in a band called Honey, H U N N Y. And, um, and he was an amazing lead guitarist, but he's in a, he's in a, a band that they play power chords. Yeah, um, yeah. So he doesn't get to, he doesn't get to show off his uh, skill set. Yeah. Um, yeah. You think that somebody in, um, will get it, right? And yeah. they'll start recording um, music that's uh, easily listenable, um, for lack of a better description, I guess. Um, in other words, it's not so complex musically that turns people off. Um, because that, that was really the thing about GNR, um, at least as far as I can figure, is it was, there was enough diversity to really keep people entertained. But more importantly, it wasn't so, um, God, um, they weren't trying to reinvent the wheel. Yeah, um, yeah. They didn't try to perfect the wheel, but they weren't trying to reinvent the wheel. Um, it wasn't so complex musically that you lost the average punter. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it was likable. Um, so, yeah, I think somebody will, will get there again. Uh, I, I, I believe mean, they I, will. I mean, I'm yeah. betting a lot of time and effort and money on the fact that they will. Um, I, re I really do believe that they, they will get, the, it's, a band will get to the heights again. And I do believe, and everyone, there is people that disagree with me, but I do believe we will have another appetite or we'll have another back in black or we'll have another um, thriller, um, et cetera, et cetera. Someone that'll sell 40, 50 million copies of an album. I really do believe, I'm talking about the rock game, you know, in the rock, yeah. rock and roll. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I do believe that we will get back there eventually. I think it's, it's all turning, coming back around again. Inevitably, you know, Mark, it always has. It's, um, I mean, you know, I, you and I go back to 
uh, you know, uh, listening to The Fix, right? I mean, <laughs> you'd have bands that were pop, mm. um, and uh, and you know, and The Cure and bands like that that were really good bands. Mm. Uh, but uh, I mean, particularly The Fix. I mean, I really liked that band, um, but they never sold to the potential that they could have. Now, yeah. was, it, uh, was it bad management or you know, I don't? Who knows? But I, uh, you know, it's it's. Um, the questions that kind of the, the where we're headed with this, it reminds me of a discussion that I had with Peter Grant, the manager of uh, Led Zeppelin. Yep. Where, yep. Uh, when, I, when I met him, um, uh, I was actually on my honeymoon and he said, oh my God, Doug Bolson. He said, you know, uh, I was just talking about you on BBC radio. And I said, all right, why? He said, because no bands come on the scene since Led Zeppelin until you guys. And- So Matt Guns and Roses. That's right. Yeah. yeah. And, and so I guess my point to kind of bring it full circle is, yeah, and I mean, nobody really thought that there would ever be a Led Zeppelin again. Yeah. Until, you know, and so True. I don't think I don't think it's a tough ask um, that we'll see that again. You know what I think it is, though, and, 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 I, and I talk about it a lot. Obviously, it's what we do 24 hours a day, seven days a week. I think there's a lot of great bands out there. And, you know, we've got 350 odd bands across our rosters. And there is some fantastic bands. A band like Them Guns with Nav in it yeah. could be could be a huge band. However, what the ingredients that's missing at the moment um, is the world. I believe needs a rock star. Oh, absolutely! Yeah, and yeah. We're, we're missing that 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 rock star, that that Bowie or that Prince or that Michael Hutchins or that yeah. Morrison. We need a rock star again. I'm looking for a rock star. That could that's be right. our new. That could be our new reality show. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. We could be on the. We could be on the panel. I, I love it. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. All right, mate. Thank you so much. Wouldn't we want to own the show though instead of being on the panel? No, we will own it. That's why we are on the panel. Yeah. <laughs> All right, man. Thank you so much for your time. Um, that was episode 30 of Seven Minute Max with Doug Goldstein. Buddy, you're a good man, and I'll talk to you soon. I got you, Mark. Peace. See you, buddy.